advice you have for homeowners at this point if, they, if they've been affected by tornadoes and what, what they should do with regards to insurance? Yeah. If they haven't already done so, they need to report the loss. You know, that's a really important piece because the more we have a handle on how many losses we're dealing with, and with the knowledge that we've enhanced that greatly on our ability to be able to know that, but it's still can't for certain get that process started with each claim until you've initiated that claim. So we've got a variety of ways of doing that. You know, we've got the command center set up where most of the major insurers have a location for you to come and report the claim. You can report it online through toll-free numbers with the different insurers. So there's a lot of different ways to get that done. And then after that, it's just being patient in the process and also not getting taken by people who try to take advantage of you by, for example, Try to get you signed contracts or give them money up front in that you maybe don't, don't know. You know, deal with only reputable firms, uh, folks that you can trust that are local and dependable and bonded and insured. You know, all that stuff. And then uh, just just letting the paint professional help you through the process. You know, don't be impatient. Uh, uh, we can, I can assure you that um, the major insurers, for example, the Oklahoma Farm Bureau. We've already made contact with the vast majority and already started settlement with a lot of those folks who've had larger losses. So you'll have plenty you'll have plenty of time to get that process started. And frankly, you'll have your insurance settlement well in advance of being able to get repairs started. So just having a little patience and uh, making sure that you're thinking through who you're choosing to do your repairs and you know all those aspects. And the claims folks can help you significantly, and the fact that they can kind of help guide you along that process. Would would you expect uh, going forward this to the, these tornadoes this much damage to to have an effect on premiums and, and rates going forward? Yeah, I, I mean it's there's I've I've seen industry estimates of the, the, this will be a two billion dollar loss, and I'll tell you anybody that's making an evaluation this quickly uh, is is likely to be way off either too high or too low, um, and so I couldn't give you I couldn't even begin to give you. A, uh, a clue as to, you know, what the size of the loss will be yet, and although it will be knowable, you know, reasonably soon. But I'll tell you, this is a, um, a state where, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're in Tornado Alley. These kinds of things can happen. To some extent, the rates uh, have built-in catastrophe loads in them, and what we'll have to do is just go back and, and analyze whether or not, you know, this type of catastrophe was sort of built into our loads or does it really change the way we view it. But, uh, it, you know, if anything, this puts upward pressure um, on rates, as any natural disaster anywhere does. Now, we've seen uh, changes in policies in recent years uh, re- reduce the amount that's paid for roofs and and uh, uh, increasing uh, uh, wind and hail uh, premium. And uh, h- How is that going to affect people this time around? The, the purpose of trying to educate consumers about, you know, uh, raising their deductibles to a level that they can manage accordingly, um, it just goes to help keep it affordable and, and available long term. Because you know, a low deductible may seem like a great idea, but you know, it costs you money in the long run. And so that's, and then also we have to look at things like you know, higher exposures on things like roofs. You know, it's just a reality in Oklahoma, and so you know, many carriers make choices to have special deductibles um, on you know exposures like roofing. 